In the aftermath of Debbie crews along Gulfport are assessing damage and working right now to right the ship. Today, Sky 10 flying over the area where several boats are partially submerged. Another boat became stuck in the rough brush along the coast there. And the rough seas also tragically led to the death of a man known for his bright spirit. Just hours ago, the Gulfport police identified the man that they found after he anchored his sailboat just feet from Veterans Park. 10 Tampa Bay's Eric Glasser joins us live from Gulfport. Eric, you spoke with folks who knew Brian. Yeah, Courtney and Frank, I could tell you that the folks that live aboard their boats here in the Gulfport area are a tight knit group. And so, yes, they are in mourning tonight for their friends. However, they are also still to some degree in a sense of shock and disbelief. And the reason for that, they tell me, is, is that this sort of thing has essentially, as far as the weather is concerned, happened year after year, storm after storm, vessels breaking free of their anchors and moorings here in Gulfport. Occasionally, yes, they are pushed into shore, as was the case here with Debbie. But Brian Close's death is the first fatality that many can recall here. The 48-year-old is being remembered as a friendly guy to be around. His friends have been gathering to raise a glass in his memory and exchange stories. Gulfport police released a picture of Chloe with his dog, Daisy, and those who knew him say that the two were inseparable. So when they found Daisy on the boat, but originally no sign of Brian, well, they had a feeling that something had gone wrong. It is so unreal. Um, it's just like there's a big hole right now. So knowing that, I mean, I'm happy that he is found, that there is no, no doubt that we don't have to search anymore. Uh, the outcome is not what we expected and hoping and praying for. Brian's dog, Daisy, I'm told, is now in the hands of close friends who plan to take good care of her. Brian himself, they say, had no close relatives. The Gulfport boating community, they say, was his family and we'll be starting a GoFundMe page, I'm told, soon to help offset funeral costs and to take care of Daisy. Several of the boaters that I did speak with out here say that they didn't feel that they had adequate warning or time to prepare for the storm, which starts to raise the question, if you will, about whether this tragic incident may serve as an opportunity to re-examine some of the rules and procedures when it comes to people living on their vessels here in the Gulfport area. I will have more on that discussion coming up for you tonight at six o'clock. For now, live in Gulfport, Eric Glasser, 10 Tampa Bay. Looking